on this episode. At one point, she was having like 100 seizures a day. She's having seizures, she's shaking, she's foaming, I don't know what to do. This is our story. We're scared. It's okay, brother, you can cry. Number one, you don't lose your temper in front of your daughter ever again. It feels like, oh God, I need to get some money now. You have to outlast the temporary. How do you outlast the temporary when it's... When it's permanent. I'm Ed Milet. I'm an entrepreneur, best-selling author, and a life coach with one goal, to change people's lives. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk to Clark and Alexis. They've been married for three years. They have a special needs daughter who needs 24-hour-a-day care and another baby on the way. They're struggling emotionally and financially, and they're looking for change. Let's take a look at Clark's submission video. Hey, Ed. My wife and I are in a situation. Uh, our daughter has a rare medical condition where she seizes uncontrollably. She's lost the ability to speak and communicate. She requires 24-hour care, but she's our pride and joy. We love her more than everything. We can't bring ourselves to uh, put her in a home later in her life. Uh, we also have a new baby on the way. Unfortunately, we'll never be empty nesters like most parents. We need to secure a strong financial future for them. Uh, we both used to have successful careers that we had to sacrifice. It's taken a huge hit to our main source of income. And we're paddling fast to try to, you know, stay above water, so to speak. Um, it's taken a, a massive toll on our marriage, our relationship. We really don't know how we're gonna get ahead. So much is holding us back. We're running out of time and we could really use your help. All right, first I'm gonna talk with Alexis. Congratulations on the new baby. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. So what's, what's going on? Well, obviously I am pregnant. I'm 26 weeks pregnant and um, my husband is so excited about it and I am so excited too. Babies are such a blessing, but um, unfortunately because we've had such yeah. trauma from our daughter, she's uh, six years old, her name is Olive. I love um, that name by the way. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, She's just endured a lot of trauma, um, and I'll talk about that in a second, but with that has come just a ton of PTSD for my husband and I, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So the first year of her life, she was completely typical. Um, she was hitting all of her milestones. She even said mommy and daddy. And when she was about a year old, the lights went out completely. Um, she lost the ability to say mommy and daddy, and we started to realize that she was doing like these little unusual eye movements, like eye rolls. And at first we were like, okay, she's probably just adjusted, her muscles are just adjusting in her eyes, she's a baby. Took it to the neurologist and she had what's called an EEG. Mm -hmm. And she was having seizures every 12 seconds, even when we couldn't see them, so even subclinically. Um, so that explains why she lost the ability to yeah. say mommy and daddy and it was really taking a toll on her uh, neurologically. At that time, I was teaching full-time, fourth grade teacher um, in New York. Love my career, love what I do, so passionate. I always had a heart for helping others and being with kids. So just being at work all day full-time, knowing that our child is at home seizing with my husband. Um, luckily, he was a stay-at-home dad at that time, working from home. We both also have network marketing businesses, so we were building that also as well. So while he was at home with her, her seizures ended up transforming into just little eye rolls to full-blown tonic-clonic shaking on the floor, foaming, um, going completely unconscious at times. Mm -hmm. Stiff, and to see your baby that once had such a light in their eyes, waking up smiling every day to just being a vegetable. Mm -hmm. um, it's horrible. My income was obviously uh, um, great. I mean, at that time I was teaching for uh, 15 years, so income was good. I had amazing be uh, medical benefits, so we needed that for her. Yeah. Um, I would be, just to give you a little scope, I would be teaching, let's say, social studies, and 
I would always have my, you're not supposed to be on your phone while you're teaching, but everybody does it. Uh, <laughs> and I would have my phone next to me and it would be, I knew the second that his, my husband's name popped up that it was, it was bad. I mean, I just, I knew it and she's having seizures, she's shaking, she's foaming, I don't know what to do, what am I supposed to do? Do I take her to the emergency room? Do, do, like, do, I, don't, I don't know who to call by myself. And it's not like when you have a child that has such severe needs like that, you can call your buddy and be like, hey bro, like, what's up? Like, how do we fix this? Because nobody understands. Yeah. It was constant, like, just guilt. Um, I wanted to be home, but I needed to be at work because we needed the benefits, we needed the salary. So there was just that, Ugh, I want to be home, but he's home with her and he's flipping out, but I want to be there and I felt bad for him because he was a, a, you know, a new dad to begin with. Things just got so heavy and so hard. Mm -hmm. So did you ultimately leave teaching and came home? Yes, which was a very, very hard decision to make. So Hard, just to understand, hard, obviously. And by the way, let me just say that um, um, I, very few people can relate to how difficult that change must have been. Mm -hmm. And um, I know you've done your absolute best to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So the change happened because you upgrade in terms of probably emotionally for you, at least you could be home to care, but financially yeah. it was difficult. Is that is that what happened? Yeah, we just trusted if we jump, the net will appear and let's just figure it out along the way. Mm -hmm. She's worth it. Like our kid literally, at one point she was having like 100 seizures a day. My goodness. So when you see your kid fall to the floor and get back up again, you realize like, I need to get back up. I need to be the one, like she's showing us how to be strong. So it's really hard to, you can't give up when your kid is literally getting up every day, hit after hit after hit. And that's really why we chose to make the big jump and just bet on ourselves. Mm. We moved to Florida, just hoping for that our dollar would go further in Florida. Yeah. Um, also that she would be able to get the care that she needed. Mm -hmm. My parents also had just moved to Florida, so we figured that would make our lives a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. So let me jump in, I wanna understand. Yes. So first off, obviously emotionally, every single day is an unbelievable roller coaster, and I'm sure it's drained you. We have not, we are depleted. Yeah, so financially, you're depleted as well, right? Mm -hmm. Is um, the pregnancy that you currently have, you started to say earlier that he's really, really excited, and you are kind of, but are you concerned, or is there a part of you that thinks, what if this happens again, yeah. or are you, is, that, is that what your concern is? I have a couple of concerns. Obviously, I'm terrified of what if this happens again, living in mm -hmm. constant state of fight or flight and just mm -hmm. the PTSD that comes along with it, but it's like, we struggle so much now for about mm -hmm. like the time balance and trying to figure yeah. out who like we have so much trouble just taking care of her and mm -hmm. now that we are pregnant it's like okay this is a miracle it's a blessing but like how on earth like how on earth are we going to do this yeah. Yeah. and i think he's really excited about the thought of we might hear mommy and daddy again, again. Yeah. and we might like we might have a child who can communicate with us and tell us like mm -hmm. i love you like i yeah. see you i love you our baby might be able to help our daughter yeah. and support her and give her that companionship you know our house is silent it's me clark and our daughter who can't talk and it's silent i want to make sure we say the name of the um, disease that she's been diagnosed with which is she has Lennox-Gastaut syndrome. Mm -hmm. So it's basically like 1% of those with epilepsy yeah. have that condition. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a degenerative, mm -hmm. progressive mm -hmm. epilepsy condition. So we really ground ourselves in, we're gonna, we're gonna get through this, we're moving forward mm -hmm. one day at a time, we got this. But, and I know uh, we, when we love your book and Thank one you. of the things that you know, you have to outlast the temporary. That's right. But what? Do, how do you outlast the temporary when it's forever? When it's permanent, right. Yeah. We'll have more with Alexis when we come back. It is so hard. To I'm like, just give me, I just need 10 minutes, but he's following me. I'm like, get away from me! Every single month, it feels like, oh God, I need to get some money now. What's the low point? Have you do anything extreme in order to provide?
welcome back to Change. We're here talking with Alexis. I'm just curious, how's it impacted your relationship with him? <sighs> um, how has it impacted our relationship? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, we're coming up on our third year wedding anniversary. Most people are still in their honeymoon phase at that point. We didn't get that. You know, we, we got married in the middle of trauma. We just said, because we kept putting our wedding off, putting it off, putting it off until things were going to be good again. But we were like, this isn't how we're supposed to live. Like, we're going to do it now because yeah. we don't know when things are going to change. So le we deserve a wedding. Mm -hmm. So we, we got married and it was amazing. And I just need to share, the day of our wedding, Olive didn't have one seizure that day. It was so remarkable. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was amazing. And it was, it was the most beautiful day and it's a day that we'll always remember. But I, I just... <sighs> we don't have the foundation that most couples have of like the years of bliss before things get challenging. It's hard to do that mm -hmm. when your focus is constantly in fight or flight mode on your daughter. Like, is she breathing? Check the monitor. Like, is her chest moving? Yeah. Um, and if you're not familiar with LGS, there is something called SUDEP. Um, it's called Sudden Unexpected Death in Epilepsy Patients. Mm -hmm. That's most children who don't overcome their seizures will be taken in their sleep. Yep. I read that in knowing that you were going to be here. It mm -hmm. took my breath away literally reading about that. And I thought about, as everybody listening to this will think about their own children, which mm -hmm. is well, number one, why I'm so glad you're here is that we can bring attention to this. And number two, that I can help you make some changes because I Thank really you. believe there's some things that you guys can be doing. I think some of the answers are right in front of you. And um, it's there's, I say this all the time, that everything in our lives happens for us and not to us, mm -hmm. even the most difficult things. That's not to say my father dying, for example, was that a good thing? No. But that's not to say that good can't come from it, that there's ripple effects from it. So I think I should probably meet Clark, don't you? Yeah. Clark, come on out here, brother. <laughs> Great to meet you, brother. Welcome. Welcome. Good to meet you. Good to have you here. Thank you. So just give us your perspective. I, I think that we obviously understand well, we think we understand how difficult this must be every single day, you know, not experiencing it ourselves. Obviously, we have a very limited concept of what it's like to never not be with this. Right. But from your perspective, how is it affecting things and what do you think you need help with? Well, um, you know, everything Alexis said is true, but one of the things that's really difficult, at least when it comes to um, co-parenting and both trying to build businesses, we both need time. And we both need to be able to focus. Um, but the problem is there's this guilt where if I'm focusing on trying to really get ahead, mm -hmm. I'm 100% there mm -hmm. and not 100% anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And then, but she needs that time too. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly almost like battling mm -hmm. in a low key way mm -hmm. who can focus. And at the same time, Olive's on the back burner mm -hmm. and she can't be on the back burner. No. Mm -hmm. She needs, so it's like, what gets sacrificed? our daughter now living inside her own head alone in our house mm -hmm. or the dream. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a lose-lose. What's the dream? The dream is um, creating a life that, you know, at first the dream was creating a life of abundance where we could just live amazingly. Mm -hmm. Now it's a dream where she can live her best life yeah. because everything it's going to take for her to really have the opportunities and just be as happy as she can be is going to require time, money, freedom. Tell me about your financial situation right now. It's, uh, it's not good. You know, like mm -hmm. as she told you, we had to make the leap um, to Florida. So we lost, what, 35, 40% of our income mm -hmm. right there. Did you lose your benefits or were you able to replace uh, them? No, we lost the benefits. Yes, we we pay for them now. And they're, well, they're supposed they're to be good. great, but the co-pays are just as much as what we pay per month. It's insane. Right. So the co-pays are insane because what Olive needs is a lot, mm -hmm. and the insurance is a lot. We just got dropped from Vision and Dental because we couldn't okay. afford it. I so, had to choose to get dropped from so it. So lost, right. lost income, expenses go up, mm -hmm. and... Um, What's the low point? In other words, what have you had to do? Have you had to do anything extreme in order absolutely. to provide? Yeah, and, and this, is, this is the hard part because it's like... I like I'm renting my car to try to make extra money. Okay. And one of the more shameful things is that, you know, I've had to my grandfather who's deceased, um, I had to sell his, you know, 
what was aired to me as gold ring okay. and watch and thing. I have nothing of them now. Okay. And I did that so we could get a security deposit okay. for our, our home. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the music industry a while ago. I've had to sell, you know, the th my instruments. Okay. Um, every month, every single month, it feels like, oh God, I need to get some money now. Mm -hmm. And I can't, and people, oh, go get a job. Just mm -hmm. go get another job. Mm -hmm. I can't not be at home for eight hours. Mm -hmm. I can't leave her. Like, one person can't handle this. Mm -hmm. Oh, hire an au pair. With what? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's this, like, mm -hmm. there's nowhere to pull from. If your income doubled, could you do it? Doubled. Um, uh, no, tripled. Okay. We'll continue that thought with Alexis and Clark when we come back. Change. We're here talking with Alexis and her husband Clark. How's it affected the two of you from your perspective? I heard Alexis's perspective, but how do you think it's impacted your marriage? Well, a lot of resentment and just being what cold. Do you mean? What do you mean? Well, resentment in the sense where Olive can't tell us, mm -hmm. oh, well, I really just want this, or I really just feel this way. Mm -hmm. So she may think, oh, no, we need to do A, B, and C. And I go, well, no, no, we need to do A, B, and C. And really, she's the judge. And she knows exactly what's going on and is stuck in her body and can't tell us. So she sees us be at odds. Mm. And so we're constantly at odds because no one else can give us any input except us. Gotcha. So, so, we're, so we're at each other We a also lot. handle stress a lot differently. Okay. Yes. Um, he's more hot-headed. I idle it, like, up here. Okay. And I, I, like, simmer down and... I'm like emergency mode. Like if if something happened to someone in this room right now, I would be able to save their life. I have no idea how, but I would figure I am MacGyver when it comes to that stuff. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, Does it get to the point though um, <sighs> where you are yelling and all of seeing that where you're getting really yes. agitated? It's been there have been times, and then I will say I don't want to yell in front of all. I don't. Want, she doesn't deserve to hear this. And like, I just want to fix it now. Yeah. And I need ten mm -hmm. minutes to cool off mm -hmm. and silence, and he is. Like Those I always, he's like me smothering me and like, mm -hmm. like you Sound know. familiar? Nobody can relate yeah. to this at all, right? <laughs> like that part of it. None of us can relate to I'm it. I'm like, just give yeah. me, I just need 10 minutes, but he's following me. I'm like, get away from me! I just need 10 minutes. Um, but the difference with you guys is that you've got a child internalizing this. If they see it, who yep. can't express the feelings like mm -hmm. a child otherwise could. I don't mm -hmm. want her to feel like she's the problem. That's, like that's every night I when I put her to sorry. bed, I try to tell her, every night I tell her, I whisper in her ear, she's going to sleep, like, don't give up. You can't give up on yourself. Mm -hmm. We'll never give up on you. And it's really easy to say those things mm -hmm. in her ear and try to apply them every day. Mm -hmm. But it is so hard. To live. So hard. And we, we have to make, we have to be able to create what we say we're going to create so we can show her, we just created this. You can too. Yeah. And, yeah. and even Isn't if she great? can't talk, yeah. she can do it. Yeah. You, uh... I'm curious about something. When I, uh, I knew you were coming and I decided to kind of check out the two of you and how you present yourself to the public because mm -hmm. I was surprised mm -hmm. in that if I looked at Clark's social media, I would think things are, they're going pretty good. Things are amazing. Things are amazing, right? Like, Cause I think in the business you're in. Selling the, the dream. You gotta sell the dream. The perception <laughs> is, hey, you can be just like us. And um, by the way, I think you just made a huge change by being here today. Just physically being here today and making the decision to be with me is a, gonna be a massive catalyst because we're, we're gonna get this rolling, just so you know. We're not gonna be able to get everything fixed in your life, but that tripling of the income, I feel really, really good about. But I wanna ask you that, is that just a conscious decision because you're kind of taught in that business, hey, sell the dream, be positive, or are you just trying to maybe fake it till you make it? or speak it into existence? Like, what's your mindset when you're doing that? Both. Okay. One, it's um, be relatable to other people. Mm -hmm. I don't want to complain. Mm -hmm. I, every day is not like everyone else's every day. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's people just like us, but mm -hmm. like, no one in our world really can relate. No, it's so lonely. if we, sh I, feel, I just feel like if mm -hmm. I was constantly sharing the problems, mm -hmm. It would, um, it would, it would. Let it, me guess, another day, Clark's down in the dumps. Right. Right, I get that. I no, get it. we we don't like that. Like right. that's not what we want. Like mm -hmm. I want people to know mm -hmm. that 
we made it. Like we made it. Yes. Be, in, in, you know, despite all of our obstacles and all the adversity, we made it. What and if you? What if you <sighs> made it because of Olive, not in spite of Olive? Mm -hmm. And do you want Olive, when she is 15, 16 years old, to think either A, you lost because of her, or B, you won in spite of her, or C, because of her. you won because of her? That one. That one. Good, because that's what I want. I looked at your social media, and it's, it's interesting, because you, you seem to me to navigate in between, I kind of want to share some things, but I really don't. Mm -hmm. And so your best post, by the way, I looked it up, your most engaged with post was on October 6, 2021, like I really looked. And do you know what that post was that day? Do you have any idea? It's the best post you've ever had. Uh, was it about just a day in the life? It was a day in the life with a video of you showing Olive, and she had had many seizures that mm -hmm. day, mm -hmm. and all the different things that you had to go through in that given day. Mm -hmm. And it was by far your most engaged with post. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think there's a huge lesson, a life lesson in this, a business lesson in this. Nothing's going to be fixed in an instant. Right. But it's not the events of our life that define us. It's the meaning we attach to the event, and that meaning creates an emotion. You have every right for this event that's taken place with your daughter to attach the meaning that you've both attached to it. But what parts of it could be happening for us and for other people? If we could alter that meaning by 20%, I believe it can make a 300% difference in your life. Are you at least willing to take some of my advice on that and the, the tools that I have to help you change? Absolutely. 100%. Okay, great. Let's get into those. I think that one of our solutions is right in front of us. And I think it's all of. It's okay, brother, you can cry. You are the fire. Get off my stage. <laughs> We're here with Alexis and her husband, Clark. First of all, I don't think you guys give yourself credit for how well you are handling this. Many couples would not be here together today. I want to give you some tools. Okay. I have some ideas for you. Number one, you don't lose your temper in front of your daughter ever again. Yeah. You just don't do that. You're a really strong man. Yes. You should give yourself a whole lot more credit for what you've done. A lot of dudes, hey, a lot of dudes, they just run. They'd find a reason. They just run, right? A lot of dudes couldn't function, couldn't produce. You've been doing what you can. You ought to give yourself some credit for that. You're a strong man, okay? And, and that needs to be, you know, I talk a lot about identity. Yeah. That needs to be your persona, okay? Strong man's vulnerable, strong man cries, strong man gets emotional. A strong man does not ever raise his voice in front of his daughter, ever. He just doesn't do that. He just doesn't do it. You're scaring her. And she can't express those things when she hears it. So she's not gonna see you do that anymore, okay? Yeah. Okay, you got, look at me, okay? We're cool on that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and by the way, that's nothing to beat yourself up about. You know how I know you shouldn't do it? I've done it. The difference is I have a daughter who can express herself. Mm. I've raised my voice to my daughter, not just to my wife in front of my daughter. I've raised my voice to my daughter before because my dad was a voice raiser guy. Yeah, mine too. Right? My dad was a yeller. In fact, no one come over to our house. My dad yelled so much. I'm like, I want to go over to my lead house. <laughs> but I had an incident once. I'll, I'll speak for Olive. My daughter was five years old, and something took place, and just reflexively I raised my voice. Not for the first time, by the way, but for like the third or fourth time I had done it to her. And I watched her face change, bro. And I watched how much I scared her. And I remember the pain of being able to see that on her face and knowing that I had had that impact on her. And I, I literally reserved, I just decided that day, I will not raise my voice ever in front of this little girl again. So I'm speaking for Olive. Bella is speaking for Olive today, okay? I had the benefit of seeing the reaction that you don't have the benefit yet of seeing. Right. So don't do it. We agree on that? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, and by the way, that's no judgment. I I've done it more times than you have. So I think that maybe one of our solutions is right in front of us. And I think it's Olive. Before I say this, I want to tell you that I believe there's a very fine line, very fine line, that you're going to need to nuance if you do what I suggest, between exploitation and inspiration. Mm -hmm. It's a very fine line. 
all of deserves privacy mm -hmm. to the extent that you can give that to her. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you've been given this incredible blessing of this precious little girl. And you're about to have another baby who probably won't have these issues, more than likely won't. So she's also going to have a, a sibling grow up who's got all the normal Little League games and soccer games and these other things. I'm speaking on behalf of what I would hope Olive would think. But I want Olive to be the reason you won. I want Olive to be inspiring. I want your family story to be inspiring. Mm -hmm. I categorically disagree that people don't want to know what's going on in your life. I don't believe that you stand out by being like everyone else on social media going, we're winning, it's amazing, living the dream. There's a million people doing that, brother. Mm -hmm. Most people don't care, aren't rooting for you, and don't believe it's true anyway. It's true. And in your case right now, it's not true, right? And I believe if you started to take that camera, Clark, and said, I'm having a really difficult day today. It's hard. My wife's been up since 2 a.m. Olive's had seizures all night. I'm tired. But you know what? I've got to go out today, and I've got to do something for my family. And I've got to help people. I believe so strongly in what I'm doing and what we stand for that I'm going to go win. And this little girl right here is the light of my life. And you started to do a little of that. By the way, we had a great day today. It's okay, brother. You can cry. We had a great day today. It was a win. All have had one of her best days ever. People will begin. It's almost like social media has changed the world, bro, where we're all our own reality show to some extent. Mm -hmm. Except, to be really honest with you, one of the little ripple effects blessing is your life's actually extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. It's not like everybody else's. Yeah. You don't go through what everybody else does. There's lots of ways I'd do it. I'd start to do more of it, both of you, on our social media. I might start to write a blog. Mm. I would not be opposed to you guys having a YouTube presence where you say, we're going to start to tell you about our family. There's an opening video of the two of you, arm in arm, and say, this is our, this is our story. We're scared. We're about to have another baby. We don't know what's going to come of it. We make a lot of money, but we have to spend a lot of money. So it's not that our business doesn't work. It's just we have to make a lot of money to support our family. I think you would find that people would begin to tune in if you gave them daily updates on what's going on in your life, the good days and the bad days. Protective of not being exploited, but at the same time, what could this do? It could draw attention to her disease that you both want to do by being here today. It will begin to send a message to her as she gets older that, She's inspiring millions of people in your family. She inspires you. You will connect with people and get them rooting for you eventually in a way that you cannot believe. Also, you can monetize YouTube. Yeah. So as that following grows, do you know there are families making five and six and seven million dollars a year on YouTube just documenting their very average lives? Ours is, ours is interesting. Yours is super interesting. Do you guys agree? Let me ask you a question. Having watched this so far today, would the rest of you like to follow up and find out more what's going on in Olive's life and yeah. in their life every day? Wouldn't you? Right? If, if, you were to, if, you were to, if you were to get involved in a business, you could get involved with someone faking it, hey, I'm driving this Ferrari that I rented for the day for the video. Or you could get involved in being in a business with a family like this, who's this loving, this caring, this wanting to win. Whose team would you join? Which team would you join? you join this team. So number one, do you like this idea? I'm obsessed with it. Yes. You're obsessed with it. That's a good. <laughs> what about you, Alexis? Are you willing to be a little bit more open with things and start to do that? Absolutely. And I think that's one of, that's how we're so different. Mm -hmm. And he knows this. I don't like like the flashy, like, yeah. look at my bends. Look at the, like, I yeah. don't like that. Because on the other side of it, I'm like, she just pooped all over the back seat. Yes. Like, where I'm literally <laughs> like, right. I have, like, this is a disaster. By the way, that video, <laughs> with that video that you would literally <laughs> just say right there, <laughs> the one about, hey, I'm driving a Benz is going to get 18 views. The one where you go, you think this Benz is cool? She just pooped in the back seat, gets 2 million views. Right. Just so you know. Right. So people want to connect. We connect with people through their pain, and then we show them a way out to inspire them. If you want to really impress people, Clark, let them know how perfect you are. If you want to inspire people, reveal your imperfections to them. And you have all these imperfect things happening in your life at any given time. And then there's this beautiful blessing that's at the center of it. And I want Olive to grow up knowing not only did my family win for me, but part of the reason my family won was because of me. Mm -hmm. And here's the most important thing. You will feel great doing it. Authentic. It'll be authentic. You just said the word. It'll be authentic. It'll take some time. But I'll help you do that if you're willing to do it. 
Absolutely. You guys willing to do that? One hundred percent. Fair enough. Thank you yeah. so much. Okay. Thank you. All right. I'm here for you guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah. Great to meet you. Great. Great. Yeah. No, I got you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Give me a round of applause. All right, I love taking questions from the audience, and this is one that I get a lot, even on social media. It says, how do I finally leave a toxic family behind? Well, number one, let's be careful before we leave family behind ever in our lives. We have to make a decision. Is this someone who's just negative, or are they actually antagonistic against me? If someone's just negative, we can manage that with distance and understanding. If they're antagonistic and rooting against us or doing us direct harm, that's when we leave, so that's the distinction. But if they're just negative, just remember this. Most people in our life that have limited thinking, limited beliefs, they're constantly projecting those limitations, their small minds, their small way of thinking onto us when they're doing it. They may even still love us. I remember when I started in business, my parents loved me, but they were very concerned, like, what are you doing? How's this gonna work out? What's wrong with you? It was just limiting beliefs. It wasn't that they were toxic. They were just projecting onto me what they were thinking at any given time. So distinguish number one between whether they're just projecting limited negative beliefs on you or whether they're antagonistic. If they're projecting limitations on you, it's rise above it, it's realize it comes from a place of love, and sometimes we just need to reduce our proximity to people temporarily until we've got to the point where we can win, because I can promise you this, the same people telling you you're crazy to be chasing your dreams, the same people that tell you it's never gonna happen, they'll be the ones someday asking you if they can use your jet or use your beach house or come over and get some inspiration from you. So reduce proximity if they're negative, get away from them all together if they're antagonistic against you. Yeah.